What's up, everyone? It's your boy Norn Rad eighty nine here, bringing you another Rad movie review. Today we're going to be talking about Hellraiser Bloodline, the fourth installment in the Hellraiser franchise. Also, I want to take this time to thank all my subscribers and everybody who's come to support the channel. I definitely appreciate it. We're going to be talking some spoilers today, so spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the movie, go out and watch it and then come back so we can chat about it. Let's get down to the video. Roll it. Hellraiser Bloodline, directed by Kevin Yeager, Joe Chappelle, and written by Peter Atkins. This film actually has a crazy backstory and everything. There's a director's cut that no fan has ever seen or anything that we haven't got a chance to see. That was directed by Kevin Yeager. <clears throat> the production company actually brought in a new director to reshoot and finish the movie and everything because they didn't like how the original one came out. And actually, Kevin Yeager, the original director, kind of wanted to just disown the film and didn't even want to be credited for the film anymore. So when it was released in the United States, it was actually released with him as a actually under a pseudonym named Alan Smithy. So it's actually kind of a funny backstory to this film. The theatrical cut that we do get is only 85 minutes long, and the original director's cut is about 112 minutes long. So definitely a crazy little interesting history or backstory to this film. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get to talking about this film. As it stands, the theatrical cut of this film that we do get, I do enjoy this film. It has a great in-depth look at the laminate configuration, the box that is in the Hellraiser films, and I feel like it's one of the few horror films that actually covers a multiple generational storyline, and it works for me. We start off in the future with Paul Merchant, a man who has designed a space station called the Menos, and his goal and creation of the space station was to use it to open it, open the laminate configuration and kill Pinhead forever, because he is part of the family cursed bloodline of the merchants. He ends up being stopped though by a group of like space, I guess space police or space guards like in the future. <laughs> they kind of stop him after he opens the box, but they prevent him from actually doing what he wants to do and that's kill Pinhead. They end up interrogating him and while he's being interrogated, he explains his his backstory and his whole motives for creating the station. So then we get to fast forward all the way, or fast backwards, like rewind, blah, we get to rewind all the way back to the 1700s to Le Marchand, the original creator of the laminate configuration. This man was asked to create, he's a famous toy maker, and he was asked to create the laminate configuration by an aristocrat. And this aristocrat is a man who wants to make the configuration to open the gates to hell. But unbeknownst to Le Marchand, he has no idea that that's why they want him to make this toy. When he ends up delivering the box, the aristocrat and his right-hand man, Jacques, end up opening the box and sacrificing this woman slave and releasing Angelique, one of the best introductions or new characters to the Hellraiser franchise that I do endure and I love this character and everything. She's officially the first person who comes out of the box, the laminate configuration. So it's really good. She's an iconic character to the storyline and that's why I like her introduction. She ends up seducing Jacques, the right hand man that helps the aristocrat to open the box and everything and they kill Le Marchand, cursing his bloodline forever after that. So that's why we end up having in the future Paul Merchant trying to open the box and destroy it officially because he's part of that cursed bloodline and he just wants to end it and for good. He just wants to end it. Then we flash forward to 1996 where we meet John Merchant, another member of the bloodline. John Merchant is an architect who creates a skyscraper that resembles the laminate configuration Angelique, after being out of the box for 200 years, ends up finding out about it and wants to go confront John Merchant. But she is completely happy and enjoys the decadent life that she has here on Earth now, so she doesn't want to go back into the box. She actually wants him to create the anti-configuration and destroy the box for good so she never has to go back into it. So when she tricks a guard into opening it and practice or opening the configuration with the skyscraper that he created and everything, it ends up not working and it ends up releasing Pinhead. And that's where we get a great introduction of 
a good chemistry between Angelique and Pinhead on screen. Like these two characters, Doug Bradley and Valentina Vargas. I'm sorry if I butchered that last name, but she's a fabulous actress who has this amazing chemistry with Doug Bradley. Their two characters clash because they have different values and everything. She doesn't want to go back into the box. She's part of like, a, she uses seduction and she likes doing that, but she's happy here on earth and she doesn't want to go back into the box. Pinhead likes, his character likes serving the box and he enjoys torture and pain and exploring new pleasures like that. And so their character values clash and their chemistry just, it's really good and really well written. And I love the two, the way they act and everything and the way we see them manipulate characters and use their powers and all that kind of stuff. Like it's really good stuff. I really enjoyed it. So we get this epic battle and like new introductions of characters like the Merchant Bloodline. We have Pinhead, we have Angelique, these three characters like all, all coming together in the 1996 part of the storyline. And they have this amazing clash where she tries to end Pinhead. Merchant ends up getting killed and like her and Pinhead have this epic battle and everything, but it doesn't work. She doesn't end up destroying him. It's just really good. It kind of feels like an ending but then we get to go to the future and we see Paul Merchant actually officially try to end Pinhead. So it's like, it, I love it because it's one of the few, like I said, horror movies that I feel covers a multiple generational storyline and I'm comfortable with it. I like the characters and I like the fact that it adds new stuff to the Hellraiser franchise for me. So that's why I do adore and love this film. It's one of my hardcore like rewatches. Like I actually have rewatched this one probably close, like most compared to the first two, this is probably the closest, the film that I've rewatched the most. So I definitely do adore this film. As being a fan though, I really would enjoy to see the director's cut and see the original idea of how the original director, Kevin Yeager, wanted this film to come out. Like I would love to see that. But as it stands, the theatrical cut, I really enjoy this film. Like I said, it's a hardcore rewatch for me. In my book, Hellraiser Bloodline is going to get an 8 out of 10. I definitely recommend renting it and watching it. Like I said, I enjoyed it more than Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, because it added stuff to the franchise for me. And I was happy with Angelique, the new character, finding out about the in-depth story of the laminate configuration and the merchant family. Like, it's just everything I wanted more in-depth stuff and they treat Pinhead like they did in the first two films <clears throat> more of like a fine spice and they threw him in when necessary so for that I do enjoy that and it has really good special effects like the special effects are kind of dated but they they age pretty well in this film like there's some CGI but it actually didn't bother me there's a lot of practical effects to go along with the CGI so that's why it kind of mixes and blends well for me and all that kind of stuff so Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thanks for sticking around with me. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. I appreciate it. It definitely helps out. So hopefully I can keep some more videos for you guys and everything coming. So have a great day and peace out.